Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Gaming. Not on the move this time, as you can see. And for day four of RPG a day. The question for day four is the most impressive thing another player's character has done, either in a game you've been playing in or a game you've been running. And for this one, I've decided to choose a game I actually ran from the end of last year to the beginning of this one, a campaign of Pathfinder. The player, a man by the name of Dylan, this was his first ever game uh, and his first ever character. And he played him to perfection. Really an excellent role player and decent guy, Dylan. And the character he was playing, Rise of Greycastle, a half-orc priest of Hor. Hor being the god of vengeance, retribution, and poetic justice in the Forgotten Realms, which is the campaign setting I often use for my games, my fantasy games. I do like the Forgotten Realms, I like the depth available. Now, this game was set in the city of Elversalt on the Dragon Coast, which is my location of choice. I have it mapped down to a T. I've been running games set there since I started role-playing way back when. And specifically, the priesthood of Hor in Elversalt was pretty small. Uh, Elversalt at this time is dominated by the Cult of the Dragon, an evil organisation, and the Priesthood of Bane, being the old faith of Bane because this game is set pre-Time of Troubles. That will make sense if you're a fanatic, or fan rather, of the Forgotten Realms. Otherwise, just see it as the Priesthood of Bane are a priesthood dedicated to tyranny, strife, and hatred. Bane is the big bad of gods. Lawful and evil, but a real, real tyrant. Uh, crusher of the weak and dominator of everyone else. Now, the Priesthood of Bane commonly subjugated the Priesthood of Hor in Elversalt. Hor isn't a popular god. He isn't the sort of god you pray to every single morning unless you're a particularly vengeful person, but rather his temple is the kind of place you would stop by and drop off a few coins if you were wishing ill on someone who'd done you wrong, or if you were seeking poetic justice from the god for something similar. So they had more of a shrine than a temple. And the Priesthood of Bane, which has about three major temples throughout the city, uh, demanded that if this shrine to Hor was to stand, they would need to adorn its pillars with symbols of Bane to show Hor as subservient to Bane, which, theologically speaking, he is not. But politically speaking, Rise of Greycastle had to go along with this. And he was consumed with a great deal of bitterness for having to do this. He was basically demeaning his god before everyone else in Elversalt by saying, this symbol of Bane is higher than the symbol of my own god. Now this game wasn't just religious politicking. There was also adventuring, there was also encountering or fighting giants, uh, exploring a fortress that had been given over to the Plain of Shadow. There was even some dungeoneering and even a dragon. Yeah, that's right, a dungeon and a dragon in a game of Pathfinder. But you get the idea. So it was a good good game, well thought out, if I do say so myself. I was running it, the players enjoyed it. But key to Rise of Greycastle's role was this struggle that he had with his faith. Not that he didn't believe, but that it wasn't gaining much respect. And he was gaining very little respect. He was also the owner, the uh, landlord of a tavern. Uh, the name of which we constantly forgot, including myself, uh, for some reason. Uh, the, the suit of scales. There you go, that's what it was called. Anyway, so after being so humiliated by the priesthood of Bane and the rest of the campaign building up and up and up, a dragon growing beneath the city, being sped up in its growth by the Cult of the Dragon, in order to sacrifice the goodly people of Elversalt to this dragon, the Bainites locked all the gates. The party were attempting to escape the city around this time along with many of the population, but they were finding themselves incapable of doing so. The Bainites and their loyalists were hemming everyone in and killing anyone who tried to get out. So the party... As they were trying to make their way to a gate, they spotted the Imperceptor, the High Priest of Bane, who had for so long been making a mockery of the Priesthood of Hor, and specifically a Rise of Greycastle for being a priest of an insignificant faith. They spotted him across the crowd that was separating them from the gates and the exit to the Dragon Coast. And armed with a Thunder Javelin, which is Hor's favoured weapon, Riser threw the javelin across the crowd towards the Imperceptor to break the Bainite ranks and allow them to make their escape. 
it was at this point that Dylan, playing Riser, rolled a natural 20. So critical success. He rolled maximum damage on the weapon as well. Now, if we were playing by the book, this wouldn't have actually killed the priest. The priest had various spells up and his hit points were much higher than a simple thunder javelin would do. But, for the sake of dramatic license, and because how often do you see not only a critical success but maximum damage, the javelin pierced the imperceptor's heart, frazzled him to a crisp on the spot, and the party were able to escape, escape uh, riding over his charred corpse. Now, for Dylan and for the character Rise of Greycastle, this was a fantastic moment. This was the poetic justice, the kind of thing that his god worked towards, the kind of thing that he prayed for. It was justice of a sort, it was vengeance of a sort, and it reasserted his faith, his belief that no matter how mighty the hand that is being pressed down on your head, it can be struck off, and the lowly can rise up and defeat the, the mighty, the powerful. And this was a really a fantastic moment for him. It was a fantastic moment to GM to describe, and I handed the description over to him as well, of the javelin coursing through the air and uh, slicing its way through the skin of the imperceptor and through his chest and so on. It was really good. One of the best moments I have had the pleasure of GMing. So, in answer to the question... Rise of Grey Castle, throwing a javelin of thunder, blessed by whore, into the chest of the evil heart of the Imperceptor of Bane in Elversalt. Thank you very much for watching, and see you for day five.